Howdy folks, welcome back to Cray Outdoors. Today's video is going to start off with a fast unboxing. I just got back from ice fishing and now I'm preparing to go to uh, to Burr Dam and, uh, and put this new thing to the test. So here's the reel. This is already open. This came in the mail a couple days ago. That's right, I've got my first ever center pin. This is an Akuma Aventa. I got the combo off of uh, fishusa.com and I am so stoked to uh, to finally have a center pin. They're all the rage right now for catching steelhead and brown trout and salmon and the streams around here. It's one of the best ways to catch migratory fish like trout and and steelhead and that kind of thing. Also a good way to to, uh, to target walleye. So I'm incredibly excited to finally use a center pin. The Akuma Aventa is basically one of the cheapest, most affordable budget beginner rods out there on the market. That said, the technology in a center pin is pretty much the same in everything. Uh, this is what the reel looks like. It seems like it's decent quality for the price. The price is still pretty steep. Even being a beginner budget center pin combo that I got, um, this is still about a $250 investment. And this is like cheapest, lowest end equipment that, that you can get in terms of center pinning. Um, that said, like I said, the technology is the same. And I, I mean, people, I, I don't really see what could be more fancy and a more expensive combo other than the fact that maybe it's made out of a higher quality metal, maybe the bearing's a little bit better, but you can actually order uh, a bearing online and 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 put it in here and it'd still be cheaper than uh, than buying a $500 reel. So I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of center pinning. It's something I'm going to be completely new to doing. My buddy Dustin's going to be coaching me today while I'm out on the water and sort of telling me what to do. He's still learning himself. It's center pinning is just sort of a, a new thing. It's really sort of taken over steelhead fishing in the last couple of years and I cannot get this open. I need to find a knife or something, so we'll catch you in a minute. All right, I finally got the cap off this thing. Let's see what the rod looks like. Center pin rods are extremely, extremely long. I got a 13 footer. Oops, I can't, I still can't get this thing out of here. How do we do this? <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, Fish USA, by the way, they're based out of Erie, Pennsylvania, so that's kind of cool. I think this is like a made in China combo, and that's why it's cheaper than some of the other combos that are out there. But at least the company I bought it from is American in any event. Uh, this is what well, it comes in this nice little bag, it looks like, so that's cool. Let's get it out of here and do. His combo, I think, has a sliding reel seat where mine is fixed, and they were the same price, so to me it made sense to get the fixed reel seat. I'd much prefer fixed reel seats. Uh, that said, I guess with the, with one that slides, you can kind of move it where you want to, but I, some of my ice fishing stuff have sliding reel seats, and I, I think they sort of become a pain after a while. So. Cool. All right. I'm not even going to be able to show you what the rod looks like. I guess it is a three piece. I'm not even going to be able to get the whole rod in the shot. I don't think because this is a 13 foot freaking rod. Whoa. I'm going to give you my fast first impressions and I'm excited because we're going to actually try this thing out tomorrow. I'm leaving in a couple minutes to go to my buddy in a couple minutes and in a couple hours to go to my buddy Dustin's house. We're getting up at 6 a.m. driving out to Burr Dam and uh, gonna hopefully get ourselves on some steelhead and browns holy cow holy cow it's all the way to the other end of my room i am so not used to using something this long i am so have no idea what i'm gonna be doing with this thing holy cow dustin you better know what you're doing because i this is crazy look how long this thing is it's like a 13 and a half foot rod. I can't fit it all in the shot. That's crazy. Well, you'll see it today when I'm out on the stream. And my plan is to start off using conventional spin gear. Not only am I going to use conventional spin gear, I'm going to use super budget conventional spin gear. I'm literally going to use a ugly stick and a cheap reel that I got from Walmart. I'm probably going to start off using a, a combo that's less than $50 and super cheap tackle, just bottom bouncing egg sacks and see what we can catch during the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'm gonna learn how to use the center pen 
and uh, hopefully learn how to cast it, drift and stuff like that. And by the time evening comes around, when you get the hot evening bite, hopefully I'll know what I'm doing with the center pin and we can catch some fish on the center pin. But I also want to show you how easy it is to catch uh, brown trout and steelhead on cheap conventional spin gear from Walmart. So that's what we're going to start off doing. We'll catch you guys on the water. All right, well, we made it to Burt Dam. We're excited to get out here and try it. Got the pin spooled up with some line. This whole trip was sort of last minute, so there's hardly any line on this thing. So it'll be interesting using this later. Starting off here in the morning, while the morning bite should still be hot, I'm just gonna try and catch fish the way that I know how. And uh, also just show you guys that you can catch fish on cheap Walmart gear. This is like a $20, $30 excursion reel, uh, like a $30 or $40 ugly stick rod from Walmart. It's just basic split shots a little micro swivel and a four foot fluorocarbon leader and uh, gonna be bouncing some egg sacs along the bottom. These are egg sacs that Dustin cured and uh, well, he's the egg sac master. Hopefully it'll be a good day down there. You're gonna be running the pin right off the bat, right? So yep, hopefully we'll all get on some fish and we're gonna take a break in the afternoon. I'll grab my center pin and uh, hopefully we can get a fish on that. Well, we made it to the river. I didn't even get it on film because uh, they broke off so fast right on the hook set, but broke off on two fish in a row. Overall, it's been pretty darn slow out here though. Not a lot has been happening. We haven't really seen, we're yet to see anybody hook up. Well, everybody's left this stretch of river, including my friends. <laughs> But uh, it's nice having a stretch of river to yourself, so I guess we're going to stay here. I miss those two salmon. I know that there's salmon in here anyway. You know what they say, don't leave fish to find fish. Up. Looks like a big brown. Going upstream. <laughs> Heavy fish, whatever it is. This is a brown, it's freaking massive. Checking my freaking phone. Not sure where he's hooked. He doesn't look like he's hooked in the mouth. <laughs> did not intend. I was checking my phone. He must have swam into my line. Don't want him going downstream or wrapping me around a rock. Maybe he's in the mouth. I don't know. I never saw the bite or felt it or nothing. I was checking my phone. My line stopped. I just assumed I was stuck on a rock. I waited a while and then uh, And then to reel in and recast, there's a fish on it. Oh no, he popped off! <laughs> oh man. That's, I mean, if he was follow hooked, that's okay if he popped off, but I think he might have been in the mouth after all. That was definitely my personal best brown in any event. Again, if he, if he was follow hooked, I wouldn't have counted it. Dang, I can't believe he popped off after all of that. Well, there's a bunch of salmon in front of me right here. They're definitely doing the spawning thing. This morning I missed two. Uh, pretty much broke off on the hook set. Well, the second one I think was a salmon. I never saw the fish. First one I saw the fish, it was definitely a salmon. I pulled, watched a big salmon come to the surface, um, and, then, uh, and then he broke off. He might have actually bit through the line. Only had on a six pound leader. I've only got eight pound main line. This isn't really the right kind of rod for running plugs, but we're gonna try the old flat fish. They aren't hitting the egg sacs anymore. I think they've grown weary of them. Let's see if we can get one of the salmon in this pod to get angry and hit this thing. Since they're doing the spawning thing, it might actually work. They don't like this thing buzzing around when they're trying to spawn. There we go. <laughs> Flatfish works, baby. <laughs> it did work after all. <laughs> they weren't biting it at first. I thought maybe they've been tormented enough, but... Small salmon. Might be a coho? We'll see what it is. One minute. Could be my coho. Coho, coho, coho. I've never caught a coho. Please be a coho. Whatever it is, it's mine. 
<laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> now it's an old king. <laughs> Flatfish works, baby. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, I got into it with a uh, with a sender pinner once at uh, Oak Orchard that was accusing me of trying to snag them. Does that look like a snagged fish to you? It's completely in the thing's mouth. Whoa! <laughs> oh, look at that, he's got a fly in his mouth. <laughs> oh, cool, free fly. I should actually check him for more hooks probably got hooks all over him. Actually, I should check him for my hooks earlier. I broke off on two salmon in a row on egg sacks this morning. I am recording, right? Yeah. Making sure. I think I got the hit on film and everything for a change. Alrighty. Well, I'll let them go, and uh, these flatfish lures are allowed down here, because uh, they are a floating lure. Again, that part of the reason why they're legal is it's actually really, really hard to snag fish on them, because uh, the way they swim and the way they float, really only usually catch them when the fish hit them. Oh. Alright, let Mr. Zombie King go, see if uh, it looks like he pretty much doesn't have any eggs left, otherwise I'd milk it. This might be a male anyway, I don't really know how to tell the difference between males and females yet. Mm, folks down there have on, looks like a nice brown. Looks like a real nice brown those folks have got. Oh yeah, beautiful brown trout. Cool, well, stuff's happening. Let the salmon go. Alright, well, we managed to piss one salmon off. That was fun. Let's see if we can get another one to bite. You can see this lure floats at rest in the water. So, perfectly legal. Got taken again. This looks like a freaking brown trout this time. Oh, I wish I got that hit on film. I so wish I got that hit on film. Oh, I wish I was recording when that thing hit. That was amazing. It was right near the surface of the water. That was a top water freaking hit. And I think this is a brown too. A brown on a flatfish? Hell yeah. On a freaking lure. Now nah, maybe it is another salmon. It's just a skinny one. I don't know what this is, actually. I'm going to stop pretending that I know what this fish is. <sighs> Could this be my coho? I want to catch a coho. I've never caught a coho. I know cohos are usually pretty aggressive. Come this way, baby. Come this way. I'm going to try and get you on this side of the rock. And then I'll have you easy. I wish I had that head on film. That fish was so freaking aggressive. It looks like it's a freaking really dead brown. <laughs> it's a really ugly freaking brown. <laughs> I can't believe a brown hit the flatfish. Pushing the water over here. Dude. Or is that a coho? I don't know my fish species. Thank God I brought the quick fish today. Holy cow. Right, he's about two feet, his tail's a little bent, so I'm going to give him another inch. So I'm going to call him 25. 25, I think that this is my first ever coho. I don't know what this is, though. <laughs> this thing swam up and hit that thing on the surface. How freaking awesome. Big fish, too. I'm some way in this slack water here. Alright, let's get you back in the main river. This is such a beautiful fish. I think this is a coho, but I'm not sure. I wonder if these people know. Excuse me, is this a coho? Do you know? Do you know, is this a coho? That's a little salmon? Nice. All right, let him go. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yes, that's a king. All right, well, I'm going to keep recording this time. That hit was one of the awesomest hits I've ever had when chasing it. Just had one chase it, so we're going to...
cast back in there again, see if he hits it this time. Oops. We're doing less reeling and more just kind of letting it drift and swim itself in the current. This would honestly work better with my center pin. I need a long rod to kind of get it where I want it. We'll watch one give chase though. Right around there is where he's at. There he goes. He had it that time. Oh. <laughs> oh man, at least I got that strike on film that time. That was similar to the last salmon. <laughs> it just swam up and whew. <laughs> he short striked it just a tiny bit though. I didn't inhale it. It was another small one, real small one. See if he'll hit on this cast. Clearly it thinks ticking him off. You looking at it? I'm on, dude. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dang, he's getting awfully close to it. <laughs> Little guy. Get him in the net just for safekeeping. Do we have a trout this time, finally? Is this another tiny salmon? It's a salmon. It's a really small one. I don't even think they run when they're small, that small. This has got to be a trout. Yeah, it's a brown trout. All right. Well, I guess we figured out the pattern today. The freaking, <laughs> the freaking flatfish. I keep calling this a flatfish. Technically, it's a quick fish extreme. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Well, we got a little brown on the day now. I can't believe that this thing's out fishing everything else. The quick fish is the way to go. Do you mind getting my picture? Ah, uh, yeah, that works. Got it? Nice. Alright, let this guy go. Finally got a brown on the day. And, uh, he hit a lure. <laughs> Got bit again. No, well, we're trying to get Olivia on a salmon. She hasn't gotten her first salmon yet. It's uh, midday, getting cold out here. The funny part is he, he said that he talked to some guys up there. He's like, yeah, my buddy's catching salmon down there. And they're like, oh, is that the guy with the four foot rod? <laughs> Walmart tackle, man. Walmart tackle. That's all you need. I missed using the old ugly stick, man. Holy cow. This thing cranks them. Well, we're at midday. We just took a break, ate some pizza. Drank some beverages. Careful. Oh, you have a rod, right? <laughs> no, that's a gnat. <laughs> It'll do more damage to your trunk than the, the thing. All right, well, there's a blooper for you on film. Now, this is the rod we've been using today, and I'm pulling out the center pin, which I've never used before. <laughs> Look at the height difference. We've got to set them down, take a step back. I've got to take a picture of this. Look at the height difference. <laughs> I'm about to add eight feet. This is new territory for me. I wanted to use the good old fashioned ugly stick and catch fish the way I know how in the morning. And it worked out. We got two nice salmon and a brown trout. Now we're going to try using the center pin and see what happens. Can't stop laughing at how ridiculous this is. This rod is literally, this center pin is literally double the length of my ugly stick. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm curious how much better it's going to be doing fishing. To be completely honest, uh, I caught more fish than most people on the six foot rod. But if you look out here, everybody and their grandma's float fishing. And I don't know, kind of makes me wonder if maybe I'm better off not float fishing. But I do need to learn how to cast this thing. Dustin's locked up. Do you want to do the honors? You can do it if you want. I know you said you wanted that one. Watch out for my own dang rod. I think it's a chromer. It's a chromer. <laughs> it's 
scooped him out from behind the freaking rock. That's what I need to catch. <laughs> I'm glad you got him. I'm glad you got him. That was his third drift. <laughs> nice. Cool. Just need that beer and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, man. Yep, yep. Sweet deal. Oh, baby. Nice female. Get a shot of it on my camera. All right, let her go. She's ready. <laughs> nice, man. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I that. Yep, yep. Motivation's back. All right, here we go. First ever cast with the center pin that I don't know how to use. We'll see how this goes. Something like that. <laughs> Is that how you're supposed to cast it? Ah, no, the line's spinning. Okay, yeah, this is, this is different. This is definitely a lot different from what I'm used to. Okay, that was better. That was better. I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Can you guys tell I'm a noob at this? I don't know. It's so tangled. All right, I've got my first fish on a center pin. <laughs> and uh, I'll be completely honest, I have no clue what I'm doing right now. I've never fought a fish with my hands other than on a tip-up. How's that feel? Insane. <laughs> Don't tell me it's hooked in the tail. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be coming. It's just wrapped, you think? It looked like he was head first in the beginning. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> Guys, like I'm fighting the fish completely with my hands. First fish on the pin! Alright, I've got to pay attention to what I'm doing and not your camera. <laughs> He's underneath the rock? Oh god. There he is. Yeah, they seem to be turning on. Evening bite is on, baby. He's not wanting to leave that rock. This is a challenging net job because he's coming in pretty fast backwards. Yes! Alright, thanks Olivia. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I think he's uh, snagged. <laughs> so, yeah. He's in the butt. <laughs> well, it happens. Snagged on a float rod. Look how easy it came off, too. And again, just, you know, throwing it out there, I've had center pinners flipping out on me for using flatfish lures at Oak Orchard and, uh, you know, saying that I'm trying to snag them. I caught three fish that slammed the quick fish today and uh, the one fish I caught on a center pin was snagged. I'll let this guy go, beautiful brown, but he's snagged so I don't count him. At least I landed a fish on the center pin. But we're back at the car, calling it quits. I filmed an outro at the dam, but with the rushing water down there, the audio's probably gonna be junk. Ended up with two salmon and, well, kind of two brown trout, one brown trout, legit, and then that snagged one, which I don't really count. Uh, if anything, it's a negative one. But I was happy to land a fish on the center pin, even though it was foul hooked. Landing fish on a center pin reel and rod is totally different. And to be honest, it is a lot of fun. I totally see why these things are becoming super popular. That said, the good old fashioned $50 Walmart combo outfished our center pin combo today. 
which was somewhat to be expected because I've never used a center pin before. However, from what I saw, I pretty much outfished all the center pinners today. There's one guy that might have caught more fish than me. I think, you know, just throwing that, that quick fish, it's something the fish had never seen before. Everybody was float fishing today. Threw something different, caught some nice fish. I had a good day. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next fishing adventure.